You already know what it do. It's SPI the most Easty, aka VJ Keyway, aka Bay Machiavelli. You know I'm three times realer, three times iller. I'm three times iller, three three times iller, three times three times three times iller. So we got uh one of the cats that I admired in the game for a long time now, SPI, Spider Low. Now. We're going to start with this, SPI. Now, a lot of people don't know that you started out, well, as far as I know how you started out, um, was it with Death Row, though? Death Row was the first? Um, I don't like to say Death Row because the name had been officially changed to The Row. Okay. So, I mean, you can call that a start out if you want to talk about, I guess, what people consider major exposure. However, um, I kind of contribute a start to when I started working with people that were actually getting paid for music. And I would have to take the start back toward um, time I spent working with Cam from Wise, Cam with a K. And that was a, quite a bit before I ran into um, Suge and the Rose situation. So it was Cam, um, I got, while working with Cam through my homie Wino from 190, um, I also in that period of time got to work with Yuck Mouth, J.O. Felony, Drace to the Gangster. Um, I was able to meet without working with him, Dub C, Trady, quite a few people on that level of the game. I also met Sebo at that time and was able to get a, quite a bit of work in and exposure with Sebo along with Killer Tay. And then a gap from that period of my life led me to meeting Suge and having an uh, experience with the role. Okay, so what year was uh, that when you were working with Cam? It was, um, I paroled in 99. And so it was very shortly thereafter. So it was from 99 into 2000, 2000. And then right around 2000, 2001, somewhere in there is when I met Suge. Okay, so now how did you meet Suge? Because from what I, from my understanding, I mean, how they have it, it's like Suge uh, discovered you. So well, can, you, can you make that clear? Um, at the time, um, my homeboy, Big Ant, rest in peace, was uh, very close with Magic uh, from the east side, who also has been kind of like known on the underground for quite some time in the industry, moving around. Everybody know who Magic is. And he had a label at the time called Done Deal Records and Eastwood was his premier artist. And he had a meeting, meeting himself scheduled with um, Suge, my big homie aunt, they were like best friends. So uh, he happened to be attending a meeting with Magic. And during the time of Suge describing what type of artist he desired to meet, meaning I didn't have to go to his hood, save him from his homies and all that type of stuff. That motivated my homie Big Ant to say, well, you need to meet my homeboy. So I got a call one day just saying, hey, should want to meet you. So I shot up to where they was at and that's how that took place. Okay, now you said uh, he was also, he had an artist named Eastwood. Shout out Woodrow, East the Beast. What up, my nigga? Yeah. Okay, so did East, didn't Eastwood uh, at one point, he didn't he wasn't dealing with uh, the row? Yeah, that was that was Magic's artist. That we all it all started right at the same time at that meeting when Suge described uh, what type of artist he would like. I was called and invited there, but Magic also was uh, able to place Eastwood, and Eastwood went on to have a career um, kickoff with the row as well. As a matter of fact, Eastwood actually had a deal. I never really received or signed a deal at the row. It was just affiliation work and moving around together. However, Eastwood actually had a contract and was on a steady uh, pay system. And uh, I would say physically, tangibly benefited from that situation a little bit more than me. Okay. Now, we know Tupac uh, had passed. Then I know Snoop left. Then Dre was gone. And then I think it was some discord between uh, the Dog Pound members, if I'm not mistaken. And at this time, you, you, you were there uh, corrupt. Was he came back to be the president, right? Vice president, I believe. Right. That's what they say. Yeah. Okay. So, what was the uh, climate like, and how was it working under the uh, leadership of uh, corrupt? If you can uh, even recall. Well, corrupt like. being a humble dude, and us having a whole other dynamic to our relationship, other than vice president of the label that I'm affiliated with, there was never really him um, having a, any amount of leadership mm -hmm. over myself or my situation other than um, he would expose me to opportunities to be at like movie premieres and things that he had accomplished in his life that he had access to that weren't directly affiliated with the role. I was able to benefit from that, being that um, he had married into my family as well. 
So he and I had a relationship that kind of like transcended the actual label. Okay. So um, through marriage, we would, without saying in law, we would just say we cousin, that's my cousin, that's my cousin, okay. which was like, it was based in actual factuals. So um, I really appreciated being around Corrupt because he had a level of humility that, like I said, allowed me to get exposure to a lot of things that weren't necessarily directed, um, directly associated with the role, but um, things that he had access to because of his years of success in the game. I also um, was humbled by the opportunity. At one point, I knew some people that were making independent films mm -hmm. and they desired to have um, a rapper in their film for the first time. And I was able to match um, and marry Corrupt with a film opportunity where he received a nice amount of money, not the amount of money that he perhaps has received on some of these big budgeted films yeah. that um, he um, had worked on. But what I appreciated about him was not only did I get a little money, because part of the deal was if I can get a rapper and I pick Corrupt, so that was the, the bait name, if I can get him in it, not only do I um, get a few dollars, but I got to appear in the film too. And it was called um, I Accidentally Domed Your Son. What I appreciate about it, Krupp kept it so G. So much down the line, they called him and wanted to do a cover photo shoot and pay him X amount of dollars to uh, f be photographed for the cover. And he told them he would only do it if they would cut me in and allow me to do it as well. So I was so young in the game and so unexpected of somebody keeping it that real. That And I've seen since he did that, how rare it is for that to occur. I've appreciated that gesture through the years. I don't know if he know how much I appreciate it. That was some big homie leadership shit. Like, y'all want me for the cover? Cool, but if I do it, you gotta look out for my man, pay him and put him on the cover too. So, neighborhood to the neighborhood. Solid. Now, did that, I noticed, uh, so did that have anything to do with, cause speaking of movies and soundtrack, was it a uh, dysfunctional family? I noticed you were on that. Were, was that facilitated through uh, Corrupt or was that more difficult? No, that, with was the a, role? that was that was Suge and the role as far as coming down to the artist. Funny thing about that, I remember Suge commissioned me to write a uh, No Vaseline remix for Corrupt. Talking about leadership and Corrupt being the vice president. Uh -huh. Just got Corrupt being named the Monster God MCs. It was real ironic. I did my thing, I wrote the whole shit. You know, no Vaseline, I could, I could say it word for word right now, so. So when you said no Vaseline, that was a diss track. Yeah. From, so he ended up doing this? it. He what did was, it. Who was he uh, dissing? I, what was I forget one? all the names, but I had did my thing and wrote the thing. And then I had it to Corrupt. Uh -huh. It was funny how Corrupt like glanced over that motherfucker and just left it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so and, so and he, was, he wasn't with it? Hell no, nah, he was offended. Oh, so, so did you, you went all the way in? No, it wasn't he, he didn't give a, like, you don't write for corrupt, like. Off top. You, like. Yes, sir. I understood yes, where Suge was coming from and why he might have suggested it. Mm -hmm. But then I also understand from an MC is accomplished and is held as corrupt, yes, how sir. hard it's going to be for you to suggest, hey, I wrote something for yes, you. Sir. And I know it was a lightweight offensive, but I only did it on, upon request of Suge. I didn't know how corrupt was going to receive it. Mm -hmm. And once he got it, he basically looked at it like, nigga, if you don't get out of here with yeah. this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, yeah, the role, I mean, the, uh, the Dysfunctional Family soundtrack was an interesting time. My experience I had, I can recall Shook um, sending us as artists, myself, Corrupt, Crooked Eye, Gail Gotti, Queen, Eastwood, to a small uh, movie house to watch this film with some of the producers. Mm -hmm. And at the time they had pieces of music in the film and then there was a lot of the movie that didn't have any music. And they showed us the film and they kept showing us, okay, like this is an area we would like a song. Mm -hmm. We would like a song here and we would like a song there. And we were there for probably a couple of hours with these producers watching this film, getting all this information. And one thing I can recall is while we were in the meeting, I was the only individual in there with a pen and a pad taking notes. So I'm writing down, the movie is about him standing up there on stage talking stand-up comedy about real people in his family from his past. He tells this whole story where he's from. And um, what happened was, you know, I wrote down the names and all the specific things he mentioned. Yeah. Nobody else chose to do so. So after we left the meeting for the next few weeks to months, when you go to the studio at the row, 
it's kind of knowing we working on the soundtrack. My opportunities to get on most of the records that they um, did were kind of scarce. It's just the way the politics go. However, it came time to where um, I did get the opportunity to get on a disc record, though. <laughs> Good looking, Simon. <laughs> what you saying for uh, on a disc record? Yeah. Uh, Wait, it was a disc record yeah, track me, up on there? Me, Gangsta Red, Rest in Peace, and Eastwood called uh, The Road, Y'all Hoes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. now I remember that one. So, um, But I thought you had two other ones up on there because nah, I know you. So what so happened, what happened was, to Dysfunctional? That so, what happened on there? Was, so what happened was um, everybody's working on records. Uh, Shook that all, whoop, 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 whoop. They bring Casey, JoJo in, Ray J, Danny Boy, everybody doing stuff. I didn't really get to uh, participate in a lot of those collab collaborations. I did get to write a verse for Left Eye on a record that made it. Wow. But what happened was, fucking with Sir Jinx, um, going to record his house, I wrote a record using all the information that I had collected at that meeting. And um, I got a beat from Jinx, and then I did a record called Dysfunctional that basically mirrors um, the movie. Exactly, I heard that. Um, thanks, and then I remember the moment of being at the night. So just imagine the soundtrack was recorded over a period of months where, you know, I guess, finally the phone call to tell uh, Eddie Griffin, come through the studio, man, we got about 20 records for you to hear. Well, we think we got it done. So. I guess Eddie Griffin came after he left the club one night. We was in the studio late. He came in with his entourage kind of deep. And just imagine, Suge had a CD at the time with 19 to 20 songs that he considered the soundtrack. My song, Dysfunctional, was not on there. Uh, so he played all 20 songs in the studio. We having a party. Everybody rocking to the songs. Yeah. None of the songs are particularly tailored to anything that was mentioned in the movie. They're just good songs. Yeah. So. Um, now here I am, after the whole presentation of all the music, Sir Jinx, this is the very first zip drive, the little key drives we have. Yeah. First one I ever seen. It was such a new idea, new technology. Sir Jinx had to get with the people in the studio to figure out how he was gonna play it on the big speakers. So finally he played it. And I could just remember the moment of him playing my record in the studio and Eddie, Griff Eddie Griffin's reaction. It was like, it was like a Grammy. It's like all the rewards you would ever need as an artist because I watched him get to react to all those other songs. And then finally my song played and I could watch him now with tears in his eyes asking who wrote this, who wrote this? And then after they point me out, I'm like, we at the two furthest points of the room from each other that we can possibly be. I mean, everybody else in the room to some degree is between us. Yeah. So he made his way across all that and embraced me so hard mm. with tears in his eyes. Mm. And to make the moment even more memorable, the next day I arrived to the studio on routine. I'm still high off the event from last night. Mm -hmm. What you know about Eddie Griffiths at the studio, pulling a crumpled piece of paper out of his pocket talking about. And he spoke on it. He said, I wrote something, man. You, yes. you mind if I get on the song with you? He wanted to get on the hook. I'm like, nigga, this your song. I will be more than honored. And then to even make the moment any more memorable without me harping on it, when he get in the booth to do his part on the intro, you hear him say, Talking about SBI, basically, he, shout out to you on. He a genius, he, he, he called me a genius, you feel me? He like, yeah, he bringing on the whole family, this nigga genius. So that was the experience that, you know, my whole experience at Death Row or The Row, if I had to sum it up and what I could take from it, that'd be enough right there. Also, the, the, the experience I had to get with the legend, with the Lisa, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, there's no way to put a price and a value on being able to have considered her a personal friend for any amount of time. 